day learners! Welcome back to my channel! For today's lesson, I will be discussing the part 2 of the lesson in digestive system focusing on the digestive enzymes and digestive disorder. In our previous lesson, we discussed the mechanical process of digestion. To complete the process, today, we will talk about the chemical process of digestion. What happens to that food you ate for breakfast? And how does your body get the energy from the food? These are the following questions that we need to answer as we go along in our lesson. Chemical process or chemical digestion is the change in the chemical composition of food, meaning the food is converted from complex substance or molecule to simpler molecules which absorb by the body and use as energy. It takes place using enzymes that found in our body. Chemical reactions are needed to get the energy from the food you eat. So what is chemical reaction? Chemical reaction is the process wherein atoms or group of atoms are regrouped and restructured to form different substances. Some energy must be absorbed before a chemical reaction would take place. Activation energy is the amount of energy that is needed for chemical reaction to start. Some chemical reactions would need huge amount of activation before they start. Catalyst. Catalyst these are the substances that speed up the chemical reactions by lowering the activation energy. So, ano nga ba ang enzymes? Enzymes are catalysts found in organisms. They are protein substances that can either initiate or speed up chemical reactions. Most enzymes are very specific to certain reactants. Sa picture na ito, makikita ninyo ang enzyme. Ang part ng enzyme kung saan nagbabind ang substrate ay tinatawag na active site. Habang ang substrate naman, ito yung mga substance na kung saan nagaganap ang chemical reaction. We have two theories regarding how enzymes work. We have the lock and key model and intus fit theory. Lock and key model states that the substrate should be complementary to the active site. It was proposed based on the facts that enzymes are very specific for the substrate. The active site for this enzyme has same conformation as substrate and this allow binding substrate in the active site. Sa madaling salita, para siyang susi na fit sa isang lock. The other one is the induced fit theory. It states that the substrate is still complementary to the active site, but the active site molds into a different way while the product is being formed. Binding is strongest at the transition state because the enzyme and substrate have molded together and that's why we called it as induced fit theory. Enzymes act on carbohydrates, fats, and protein to convert them into simpler molecules which can be absorbed by our body. So let's start with the carbohydrates. It is the main source of energy. They are found in bread, cereals, potatoes, rice, corn, pasta, and beans. Carbohydrates are starches and sugars. And enzymes which act in carbohydrate to convert into simple sugar is called carbohydrase. Chemical digestion of carbohydrates begins in the mouth and ends in the small intestine. In the mouth, carbohydrates plus thialine or salivary amylase will produce a disaccharide such as maltose, sucrose, and lactose. Our mouth consists of salivary gland that produce saliva 
and this saliva contains a starch digesting enzyme called salivary amylase or thialine. It changes starch or also known as amylun into a double sugar called maltose. Hindi lahat ng carbohydrates ay nabibreakdown sa bibig. That's why pancreas produce a digestive juice that contains a starch digestive enzyme called pancreatic amylase or amylopsin. Amylopsin will repeat the work of thialine to ensure that all carbohydrates molecule are changed into disaccharides. Then, the intestinal glands release the final enzyme for the digestion of carbohydrates. Maltose will produce glucose with the aid of enzyme called maltase. Sucrose will produce glucose and fructose with the aid of enzymes called sucrase. And lactose will produce glucose and galactose with the aid of enzyme called lactase. These simple sugars are absorbed into the bloodstream through the villi or villus in the small intestine and circulate through the blood to fuel the body functions. Sunod naman, tumungo tayo sa chemical digestion ng protein. It is an enzyme, antibodies, hormones, and substances that help the blood clot are all proteins. It forms part of our muscles. When you eat protein-rich food, it is broken down into amino acids which are then used to help our body in building muscles. Chemical digestion of proteins begin in the stomach and ends in the small intestine. In the stomach, protein will produce polypeptides with the aid of enzyme called pepsin. Our stomach consists of different glands. These glands secrete a digestive fluid called gastric juice, which contains two important substances, pepsinogen and hydrochloric acid. Pepsinogen, with the help of hydrochloric acid, is converted into active form pepsin. This enzyme converts long protein into short polypeptides and this will go into small intestine for final digestion. In the small intestine, protein will produce polypeptides and dipeptides with the aid of an enzyme called trypsin. Trypsin will repeat the work of pepsin to ensure that all protein molecules are changed into polypeptides. Then, the intestinal glands release the final enzyme for protein digestion. Short polypeptides in the presence of peptidase will convert into amino acids. Such as, polypeptides will produce amino acids with the aid of amino polypeptidases. Dipeptides will produce into amino acid with the aid of erepsin or known as dipeptidases. Animal cells are capable of producing some of the essential amino acids they need. However, other amino acids that animals cannot produce are either directly or indirectly obtained from other animal or plant sources. And last that we have to talk about is the chemical digestion of fats. Fats provide energy for the body. They help synthesize hormones. It protects body organs against injury. It also insulates the body from cold. The chemical digestion of fats begins and ends in the small intestine. In the small intestine, fats will produce fatty acid and glycerol with the aid of enzyme called pancreatic is step seen. The chemical digestion of fats happens when liver secretes bile that's stored in gallbladder. When the gallbladder releases bile, the moment food is present in the upper portion of small intestine known as duodenum. Bile has no enzyme but it changes fats into tiny droplets so that enzyme called lipase 
acts its faster to convert fats into fatty acids and glycerol. When a person consumes more food than it needs, the body stores the extra energy in the form of fats, which are deposited beneath the skin o yung tinatawag nating taba or bilbil. Lahat ng sobra ay masama. Kapag kumain ka ng sobra sa kailangan ng iyong katawan o kumain ng hindi tamang pagkain, it will lead into different digestive disorder or diseases. Digestive disorder consists of the following. First on the list is constipation. Constipation is the irregular defecation due to dry stool or feces. This is caused by the digestive waste move slowly out in the colon. In order to get rid of this disorder, we need to eat more fruits and vegetables to provide more fiber that will help push waste out of the colon. The next digestive disorder is diarrhea. Kung ang constipation ay ang pagtigas ng dumi, diarrhea is a watery fecal excretion o yung tinatawag nating pagtatae that can lead dehydration or pangihina ng katawan, lalo na sa mga bata at matatanda. It is caused by microbial infection or contaminated food and water. In this case, bukod sa pangihina ng katawan, pwede siyang makaramdam ng pagkahilo, pagsusuka, pananakit ng tiyan, at lagnat. Paano ito malulunasan? By avoiding fatty foods, and drinking oral rehydration such as fluid with salt or sugar to replenish fluids in the cells to avoid dehydration. The next digestive disorder is GERD or known as gastroesophageal reflux diseases. It is characterized by heartburn or chest pain. It is also known as acid reflux. It is a condition of abnormal backflow of acid from the stomach upwards into the esophagus. It can lead to irritation that can damage esophagus. Antacids are usually prescribed to reduce or neutralize acidity. If antacids will not work, surgery is recommended. The other digestive disorder is known as peptic ulcer. Ulcer is a painful sore in the mucous lining of stomach and duodenum. Sores located in stomach known as gastric ulcer, while sores located in the duodenum is known as duodenal ulcer. It is caused by too much consumption of acid, alcohol, smoking, or even bacterial infection. Ways of treating ulcer is the use of antacid or antibiotics. The other one is inflammatory digestive disorder. These are the condition characterized by swelling or inflammation and pain. We have two types of inflammatory digestive disorder, namely gastritis and appendicitis. The first one is gastritis. Gastritis caused by irritation due to the inflammation of mucus lining. Symptoms will be nausea and vomiting, sharp pain in stomach, feeling of bloating. It is caused by long-term use of drugs, smoking, too much consumption of alcohol, coffee, and tea. Antacids will be prescribed by the doctor to reduce acid secretion and antibiotics for infection. The other one is appendicitis. Appendicitis is the inflammation of appendix. It is caused by when food entering containing bacteria might cause the inflammation. If the person has appendicitis, it needs medical attention or else the inflamed appendix may rupture that can lead to appendectomy or removal of appendix. And last, digestive disorder is food poisoning. Food poisoning is caused due to the toxic substances released by certain bacteria or viruses, 
Example, Staphylococcus aureus. It is a kind of microbial or bacterial infection that causes inflammation in the stomach and intestine. Another one is Salmonella species. Salmonella is caused due to the uncooked food. Among the viruses, Hepatitis A is one of the common foodborne pathogens. This pathogen may cause inflammation of liver. This is highly contagious, which can be spread through contaminated food and water. When you have this virus, you will experience these following symptoms, such as body aches, fever, fatigue, loss of appetite, jaundice, or yellowing of eyes and skin. Symptoms of food poisoning are chills or panginginig, heartburn, nausea, dizziness or pagkahilo, and heat in a form of fever. Yung range ng symptoms ay pwedeng umabot ng ilang oras or maximum of 3 days. Depende sa epekto nito sa katawan ng tao at depende din sa incubation period ng bacteria or virus. Dahil bawat bacteria or virus ay may iba't ibang incubation period. Some light cases requires fluid or oral rehydration as remediation. But in severe cases, intravenous medical attention may be required. To check your understanding about the lesson, it's quiz time! So that's all our lesson for this day. Thank you grade 8 students. I hope you learned something. If you like my video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on the bell for more updates in our science class. And comment down the topic that you want me to discuss.